Hey, what's up everybody? This is Like It's 1985 and this is my review of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Voyager Class Predaking. And uh, Predaking does come packaged in his robot form. So we'll be transforming him from robot to the beast form in this review. So starting off, let's take a look at the accessories. Uh, I've already taken the liberty of attaching these two accessories here uh, that peg into either of his forearms. Uh, these are like the Dragon Blasters, I think they're called. As you can see, they have a projectile missile at the tip here. And you can arrange the weapon such that it's more like this. But that just kind of looks odd uh, for the transformation. But what that does do is allows you to fire the missile. So let me go ahead and take off these two weapons here. And we can take a closer look at the detail here. Pretty nice. As you can see, the missile goes into a... Uh, dragon mouth. Uh, you got some articulation here at the jaw. And to fire the missile, you pull back on this lever here. And there it goes. And it's actually a strong spring, so uh, children be careful. Uh, so you got a uh, nice sculpted detail here uh, at the tips of the projectiles. So I will be setting those to the side for the rest of the review. So these can actually combine to form one weapon, as you can see. They just come together like that, and they move in tandem. So, pull back, you can see they move together. And according to the instructions, you're supposed to be able to place them in the hands, uh, and, you know, for some kind of dual wielding weapon here. Or not really dual wielding, but, you know, be able to grasp the uh, pegs here in both hands. It really doesn't work out in practice as far as I can see. The one thing is the hands, uh, or the fingers that is, don't, they don't really close that well around the peg. And the tips are soft, flexible plastic. So given those two considerations, they I can't really get these to be held in the figure that well. Maybe there's a way to do it. But uh, anyways, I, I've had, had not much luck in that uh, for that particular uh, arrangement. And here is the other accessory, which is a nicely detailed sword. And you notice here it has this uh, tab here on either side. And there's a corresponding uh, slot there in the hand on either one. And uh, of course the, the tab goes into the slot. Like that. And being that the fact that you have hard plastic going into a soft plastic with the hand, it really doesn't work out that well in practice and it, it does fall out rather way too easily. So that's rather ineffective in my opinion. So too bad because this is a nicely detailed sword. But it doesn't, doesn't really work out in practice. Uh, so moving on, let's take a look at this guy compared to Voyager Optimus Prime. And they're it's in terms of overall height, uh, they're pretty much a match, as you can see here. They're like that. You can see the uh, comparison there. From where I'm looking, it seems like uh, Prime is a bit taller, but that could be due to the fact of the way they're posed and so forth. But you get the idea, the general idea of how, how big this guy is, and really the overall height comparison is, is pretty comparable. So let's take a closer look at this figure. One of the things that people have complained about, and which I agree with, is the lack of paint apps. Yes, they do have the nice gold uh, Beast Hunter symbol there on his chest, and he has silver on his face, and some touches of orange and gold uh, throughout the figure. But looking at the wings here, on the box, these edges of the wings are painted black. And there is a missed opportunity on Hasbro's part that they could have painted this and it would have been that much better as a figure. Uh, same thing goes with these symbols here on the wings. Nice detail there, but of course Hasbro chose not to paint those. Hmm. So yeah, there's that. Um, the wings here, uh, going into articulation, the wings are supposed to be posed like this. They're supposed to be around his thighs. I kind of, however, like the look of him having him up here, but, you know, it's your preference, of course. Um, you can see how the articulation goes. There's a swivel joint there. You can bend it back and forth like that and like that. So you do have some posing options 
uh, with the wings, which is nice. So let me just get those out of the way for now. Uh, head is interesting because there's actually a base. At the base of the head, there's actually a joint that allows the head to swivel. But then the head actually is a separate piece. You can see the joint there on the side that kind of allows him to look down a little bit. Um, so that's articulation for the head. Uh, swivel, articulation of the shoulders. Arms can go out about like that far. Swivel at the bicep. And a swivel, swivel joint uh, at the elbow. 360 rotation at the wrist. Then you have the uh, articulation here on the claws. Uh, there is no waist articulation due to how this is this figure is uh, engineered. You do have not really ratchet. I mean, the, there's a ratchet design sort of there, if you can make that out. But it's not. Well, I guess it goes that way and makes a ratchet sound, so that's good. So you got moving like that. There's no uh, thigh swivel or anything like that, but you do have a swivel and. A bend there at the uh, knee and movement here at the toes. Uh, so, you know, okay articulation. So, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and transform this guy into the beast form. Uh, let's go ahead and put away his uh, black spikes here. And we're going to open up his chest. You can see there. And then we're going to take this section back here. Kind of get that back out like that and let me go ahead and adjust the camera here there we go so as we move this back piece out you can see the head is basically shoved into his chest cavity and it should go in about that far just keep pushing it until it doesn't go any farther and you'll you'll see how far it get, it's supposed to go in take the head out rotate it around like that and as you can see the uh, robot head will go down into the chest kind of like that, close up the chest, and there you have the head transformed. Like that. Uh, go ahead and bring down the arms here, which of course become the claws. And I believe the three claws are at the front here, I believe, is the correct transformation. And let's see here, we'll take this around, spread out the claws, and that's pretty much all you have to do for the front of the figure. Get the wings out of the way here. Here comes the interesting part. Uh, you want to rotate the waist, and I guess I should have mentioned that. I, I forgot that. There, there is waist articulation. I was wrong uh, due to the transformation. So you want to rotate the waist. Uh, looks like it's going to be 90 degrees, such that you have the front of the robot torso facing towards you like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take, you'll look at the back of the legs here. And there's actually the uh, the back legs for the dragon mode that are stored in here. So these are on a uh, a hinge joint. They come out to the side, and same thing out over here. And what that does is allow you to basically fold up the bottom part of the leg over the thigh area. So you can take this, rotate this around like that, and then coming over here. Do the same thing like that. And what he should end up with is these two bottom parts of the legs are going to actually tab together. There's a tab, as you can see right there. And just get everything lined up so that it actually tabs into place. Well, actually, sorry. Bring this section out like this. Rotate this around like that. And then bring everything together. So, sorry about that. So... Everything should tab into place. Bring down the hind legs here. So this is what you should have so far. And then these gray bits here kind of fold inward, sort of to connect, sort of uh, connect the, not really connect, but just visually connect the uh, back half to the front half, kind of filling in a little bit of that gap there. And then these bits here come together. These were the uh, knee armors uh, in robot mode. And sometimes that comes loose. Okay. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to attach the tail here. 
the tail has a sort of a little uh, tab there, those tabs in the back. It only goes in one way, so you can't get it in the wrong way. And I think you're supposed to bring these uh, orange bits here forward a little bit. Something like that. And now just uh, get everything squared away so that it looks like a dragon or something appro uh, approximating a dragon. Bring the wings back, kind of get them out to the side maybe, however you like them. So there is dragon mode for Voyager class Predaking. Pretty cool. So again, in dragon mode, same articulation but just at different points. Uh, you're going to have the articulation here at the neck. We can take a close look at the dragon head here. So you got a swivel and a uh, interesting joint there. You can see it in action. The jaw, the lower jaw does open up. It's on a hinge. And you can see there, not, I mean, there's some gold paint, some silver paint, but not quite as detailed as maybe I'd like. And, you know, once again, the wings are really plain, just solid orange. Uh, and the uh, photos on the actual packaging, uh, the edges, like I said before, are painted black, and it would have been nice to have these symbols painted like in gold or silver. Uh, actually, I need to rotate this foot around here, like that. Sorry. Alright, so there we go. Beast mode for Predaking. It, overall, it looks like a dragon. It's kind of interesting how the feet and the legs form the, uh, well not the feet, but the lower leg and the upper leg form the uh, midsection of the uh, beast mode here. There you go. And I almost forgot, you can attach the weapons because there actually are some peg holes here and here. And that's where the uh, Hydra effect comes in. With the beast with the three heads. This will stay in here. There we go. And push these back like that. Get this head up a little bit farther, maybe. So there you go. And if you didn't know, they're supposed to be releasing, I believe it's like a Supreme class Predaking as well as a Supreme class Optimus Prime. So you may want to wait for the Supreme class. There may be more features like better paint applications. Uh, I'm guessing there'll be like lights and sounds maybe uh, for that particular figure. So if you're not really sold on this Voyager class figure, then uh, you might want to wait for the uh, Supreme class or whatever class it's going to be. It's supposed to be uh, much bigger than the rest of the uh, Beast Hunters Prime line. So there you go. Enough of my talking here. This has been my review of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Voyager Class Predaking. Thanks for watching.